Welcome, welcome. It is Monday, May 20th, 2024. I'm Gabe Hernandez for Comical Opinions. The Eisners. Okay, so the Eisner nomination list came out this week, and oh boy, you got some entries on that list that boggle my mind. I'm not even sure where these nominations come from, who decided they deserve to be picked, what have you. It was just a laugh riot and not in a good way. But instead of picking on that list and all the people who are on it, not all of them, some of them definitely deserve to be on the list, but there are the way too many that don't. We decided to go back and look at all the reviews we did for 2023, figure out which fall into which category and come up with a better list. So here we have our version of who should have been on the Eisner nomination list for 2024. Okay, starting with the one shots. We didn't have five because we don't get a lot of one shots. Uh, we look across all our indies, also including Marvel and DC, but there were three that stood out that were worthy of recognition. First off, we have Rocket Man and Rocket Girl from Dynamite Comics, written by Jacob Edgar, with art by Jordi Perez. This is a classic pulp adventure style comic from the start to finish. It's taken from public domain characters, so that's pretty much easy to pick up from a licensing point of, licensing point of view. But it was set in the period during around the 1930s, 1940s, and it felt like an old school pulp serial classic uh, adventure in the style of the Rocketeer. So if you like that kind of storytelling and it was extremely well done, that was a good pick. Next, we have Tales from the Cave from Mad Cave Studios. It's in te technically speaking an anthology comic, but what it is is a collection of stories from their other series where they take a slice of that story and tell it from a new perspective or add to it or give it some underpinnings that make that story more rich. For example, there's a section of it from Not Nottingham. There's a section of it uh, and a short story from Hunt, Kill, Repeat, and et cetera, et cetera. So that it goes on and it, each one of those short stories is self-contained, but it makes the ongoing series that they refer to richer, more complete, and gives you a fresh perspective. Third on the list, and the last one on the list, because we only have three in the one-shot category, is Werewolf by Night from Marvel Studios. Or not Marvel Studios, Marvel Comics, yes. Uh, written by Derek Landy with art by Fran Galan. Now, this was a classic horror comic. Where you have Werewolf by Night and Elsa Bloodstone. They go on an adventure. They team up. They separate. They do their things. And it had a sort of dichotomy in art styles where were Werewolf's part of the story is drawn one way, Elsa's part of the story is drawn a little bit different, and then they eventually come together to save the day. This is on the list because, A, it's classic, well-done horror comic. Also came out the right time of year instead of coming out in July. It came out in the, roughly the fall time frame. And if you like just a simple adventure story with a, a, a section of the Marvel Universe that doesn't get a lot of play, which is horror, this was it. And moving over to the ongoing series, and some of these will maybe a surprise, some of them probably not if you've been following Comical Opinions, but here we go. Starting off with Conan the Barbarian from Titan Comics, written by Jim Zub with art by Roberto, Roberto De La Torre. If you like Conan comics, if you like Robert E. Howard, uh, Jim Zub is channeling that man in just the most amazing ways. This is gritty, pulpy, barbarian action and adventure and uh all kinds of drama and uh, just intensity that you would want out of a Conan story. So absolute banger of a series, and it's been consistently good from start to finish. Next up we have from DC Comics, Batman Superman World's Finest, written by Mark Wade with art by Dan Mora. Now, I'll be the first to admit, Mark Wade has his challenges when it comes to <laughs> the things he says online and, and some of the comments he makes in interviews, and he's really kind of uh, from a personality perspective, maybe, maybe not everybody's favorite person, but man, oh man, does he know how to write a great superhero comic story. That version of Batman and Superman together has got all the bells and whistles. Dan Moore's art is, is, is fantastic, and the two of them together are just a powerhouse at DC Comics. Uh, if you want to look forward to something coming out of DC, you see those two names together on the cover, this is it. They're, they go through all kinds of adventures, all kinds of um, action scenarios. They're bringing up characters you haven't heard of, in some cases for decades, and it all fits together with high-flying adventure, which is what you really want out of a superhero comic, not slice of life or uh, whatever drama nonsense people tend to think up these days at, those, at the big two. Next up, moving over to Marvel, we have... Moon Knight from Jed McKay and Federico Sabatini with, uh, I would call out, special attention to Rochelle Rosenberg on the colors, which are amazing. Uh, 
the Moon Knight may not be the most phenomenal comic in the world, but it is consistently good. So when you have the big two are constantly at war with each other and also with themselves about continuity and quality going up and down and all around, it's nice to have a comic that is consistently good across the board. You stay focused on Moon Knight as the main character. He has his adventures and and you uh, see that there is some kind of status quo that's been developing over time. You first started out with Moon Knight as a solo character. Now he has effectively a team with the base of operations. So kudos to Jed McKay and the team for at least providing a consistent comic that you can rely on to entertain you if you're a fan of Moon Knight. Moving over to the two last ones are both from Image, no surprise there. One is, of course, already on the list, but it bears recognition because he deserves it. It's Daniel Warren Johnson on the writing and art for Transformers. If you're an old school Transformers fan, as I am, if you're old enough to remember the cartoons, as I do, uh, this is an amazing comic. It, it hits all those nostalgia bells and whistles, but it feels fresh. It feels modern. And Daniel Warren Johnson has the ability to dig deep into pulling out those hard-hitting emotional moments. So even though it's a sort of what you might at first blush think is a super silly kids cartoon with big robots fighting each other, it gets so much better than that. And it's mature, it's thoughtful, it's emotional, and it just hits all the, the right notes. Lastly, uh, for Image Comics on the ongoing series, we have The Sacrificers Volume 1 from Rick Remender and Max Fiamara. It is a fantasy tale about a group of individuals who are essentially tagged or tapped to be sacrifices to the gods when they get when they reach a certain age, and then when the central character, who's by the name of Pigeon, who is a anthrop anthropomorphic pigeon, you know, finally gets to his destination and he sees the horror of what is really going on here. It just it's a tragedy. It's a fantasy. It it just it, it, it enthralls you from every single issue from one to the next. And if you're not picking that up, you are mistaken. <laughs> Pick up the sacrificers. So that is it for our five ongoing nominations for what the Eisners should have selected. Okay, moving over to the limited series, of which we have a lot more to choose from and pick from. And in this case, we're not only going to choose the five that we thought should have been on the nomination list, but we also have two honorable mentions. So first off, for a limited run series for what should have been on the Eisner list, we have The Boogeyman from A Blaze Publishing, written by Matthew Salvia and art by DJet. It is a strange, dark, uh, whimsical tale about a young boy who gets caught in the middle of a effectively a civil war between factions of boogeymen. And we get to we learn all about their world, how they've been uh, festering and simmering into a some kind of conflict for, in some cases, hundreds of years. And it's a combination of street urban fantasy with dark supernatural whimsy and strange developments. And it's just an amazing tale. And the art by DJet is fantastic. Moving over to, well, you know what? Let's stick with the Blaze because the Blaze published the Boogeyman. Let's stick with the Blaze for the next title. It's Animal Castle Volume 2 from writer Xavier Dorison and art by Felix Delep. It is a sort of a sequel kind of to Animal Farm. And it stars a small mother who is a cat and her involvement in what is effectively is, is turning into a rebellion against the dogs who have taken over the farm. And it has all kinds of political undertones, but it told in an allegorical way. But the emotion and the heart and the tragedy of all the different things that they experience and the, the central characters fight to sort of become part of a rebellion that is meant to be free. It speaks volumes about political oppression and uh, the, uh, the, the use of force and how neighbors are, are turned against each other and what peaceful resistance looks like because a cat obviously is not going to be a dog. You get all of that and more, and it's an amazing comic. Definitely recommend you pick that up. Third, this is no surprise to anybody who's been following the site, it's Big Game by Mark Miller with art by Pepe Larraz, published by Image Comics. That is absolutely the archetype or the, the, um, uh, the model for what every big crossover should be. Mark Miller pulls in characters that in some cases haven't been seen in years from all his different titles and all his different creations to create an epically scaled uh, fight and uh, conflict to stave off essentially what it amounts to the supervillains taking over the world. 
But the twist is the supervillains have already taken over the world. It's just people didn't know it yet. And so now the heroes have to reemerge and rise to uh, repeat history, but at the same time, change it. <laughs> and so it is an amazing uh, comic series. Definitely recommend you pick that up. Next, we have from AWA Studios, The Madness, written by J. Michael Straczynski, with eight art by David Lorenzo and ACO. Uh, this is, think of the boys without the satire and comedy. It is a hard-hitting, rough, raw, rage-fueled comic about a thief with superpowers who gets uh, betrayed by her friends, and she decides to go on a revenge quest after her loved ones are killed. It is emotionally, emotionally crackles like lightning. I mean, just it is so raw and so uh, angry. And that's exactly what you want from a comic. It can't be just about the art and the dialogue. You have to feel something. And if you want a comic that grabs you and makes you feel something right from the first issue, The Madness is it from AWA Studios. Uh, last on the list, but not definitely, definitely not the least. We have from, also from Image Comics, the Enfield Gang Massacre, written by Chris Condon and Sean Phillips. This is a prequel of sorts to That Texas Blood. So if you're a fan of that series, that's uh, it's the same writing team, it's the same art team, and what it is is a true blue, uh, old school western about a gang of robbers, if you will, kind of with a heart, who get framed for murder and the political machinations that are behind that, but also just the straight up uh, gunplay uh, standoff type of atmosphere that you would get out of something like Tombstone or uh, any, uh, take your pick of any uh, classic Clint Eastwood Western films. Raw, uh, it is uh, gritty and, and you get uh, some really strong dramatic elements into that uh, mini series. So that the Enfield Gang Massacre from Image Comics. So that's it for our five for the limited series category. Now we have two honorable mentions because they came very close. We just almost couldn't decide, but we fought, felt that they were worthy of mention. So we're going to talk about that here. The first is Hunt, Kill, Repeat from Mad Keep Studios, written by Mark London and drawn by Francesco Archidiacono. I hope I was saying that right. And Mark Deering. This is a fantasy tale about what would happen if Zeus and the Greek gods came down to earth and decided to take over. And what happens when now there is infighting amongst themselves when, you know, interaction with humans starts to build relationships and Zeus is not happy with that and decides to take matters into his own hands, creating dissension among his fellow gods. It is a powerful tale. It is really well written, written and every single issue has that big wow moment that you're looking for. Every issue must have a wow moment for a, a, a series to capture your imagination and London nails it. So that's a good one. The second honorable mention is Lord of the Jungle from Dynamite Comics, written by Dan Jurgens, with art by Benito Gallego, a name you should be paying attention to. Dan comes in, Dan Jurgens comes in, and he gives you a true blue, classic, tried and true Tarzan tale uh, that's set in two timelines. So the plot structure is actually a little bit more uh, complex than you would expect, but it's really well, well, well written. It is evoking the voice of the original creators, and which is uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, and Benito Gallego's art is uh, fantastic. If you like that classic Bronze Age style art, Benito Gallego nails it, and he needs to be on more comics that have those pulp action figures, like maybe Conan if Robert De La Torre ever decides to take a break. Please get Benito Gallego. He understands that structure of character design that is quintessential in the in the uh, Bronze Age, and it's beautiful. So that's it. That is our list of nominees for the what we thought should have been on the Eisner nomination list. Uh, what do you think? Is there any comic series that should have been on the list as well that we didn't talk about? Is there any artist or writer that should have gained that recognition but didn't get it? Uh, let us know in the comment section. And now we're going to take a break and move over to the rest of the newsletter. Welcome back to the rest of the newsletter. So let's talk about our pick of the week from last week. If you're a member of our Substack uh, mailing list, you already know that our pick of the week from last week is Sacrificers number eight 
from Image Comics, written by, again, Rick Remender and Max Fiumara, who, who we just talked about in our, who should have been on the Ice News list. It is, this series just kind of, it just hits you in all the right spots for emotion and drama and impact. And this issue is no ex exception because the main character, Pigeon, sort of has to make a big choice that really sets the course for the rest of his life. Now, if you're a subscriber to our Substack, you already got the audio version as well as uh, the video version on our YouTube channel. Please, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, and uh, you'll get it delivered to you every Saturday at noon so that you can listen to the review, and then hopefully that'll be enough to kind of convince you to buy the comic because it really is amazing. Uh, so let's move over to the uh, reviews that are coming up this week. Uh, first off, we have from Dynamite Comics, a big week for Dynamite. We have Elvira meets HP Lovecraft number four, Thundercats number four, Army of Darkness Forever number eight, and James Bond 007 number five. So big week for Dynamite, and hopefully we'll get all those uh, wrapped up pretty quickly. Then we from Zenoscope, we have the issue number two for Pooh versus Bambi. The first issue kind of took us by surprise because we didn't know what to expect. They're sort of leaning into the fact that Pooh is now, uh, Winnie the Pooh is now public domain and they're making, Zenoscope is making the most of it. So, and the first issue was weird, but kind of entertaining. So let's see if the second issue holds up to it. Then moving over to Image, also a big week, week for Image. We have Cobra Commander number five from Image and Skybound. I believe that is the finale to that miniseries, which is really well done so far. We have Sam and Twitch Case Files number three from Image. Rook Exodus number two from Image Comics and Ghost Machine. That's the Jeff Johns imprint. And Void Rivals number nine. That is a continuation of the sci fi series that is part of the Energon universe. Then moving over to Titan, we have, surprise, here we go, Conan the Bar Barbarian number 11. And then we also have Rebel Moon House of the Blood Axe number four. I believe that's also the finale to that prequel series to the Zack Snyder Netflix films. Then moving over to Mad Cave, we have Nottingham number 12, which I believe is also the finale for that critically acclaimed series. And then from Massive Publishing, we have Washed in the Blood, number two. So that's it for what's coming up this week. Thank you very much for joining. Again, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, please do so. It's free. There's a link down in the description. Uh, otherwise, please like, share, comment, subscribe, because we'd like to have you along. And if you like more reviews or more videos just like this one, please stay tuned for the outro. But also make sure to leave a comment to let us know who you thought should have been on the Eisner's list Put it down in the comment section. We want to hear your opinions on this. And then if we get enough of them, maybe we'll have a little uh, follow-up to this one to see what, what everybody else thought. So thank you very much. Have a great day.